Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Amen. Amen. Well, uh, in what Pastor Rodica was talking about, we want to uh, get every one of you to really focus in. And uh, everyone online, we want to invite you to join us now as we're going to get everyone around the globe that's joining with us in whatever country you're coming from. Let's all unite together and let's pray for Jerusalem. Let's pray for this conflict. Let's pray for God's divine intervention. And let's pray that we see a miracle come through this. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we join together with all of our partners around the world. Lord God, we come together in the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee has to bow. That means every person and every spirit in this conflict now, Lord God, has to bow to your name, Lord. We declare your lordship over this, this circumstance and situation. Lord God, and we come together. We pray as they have a physical uh, iron dome and a shield, Lord God, we pray for the spiritual iron dome and the shield, Lord God, to protect your people, Lord God to protect, Lord God, of what the enemy means for evil, to turn it for good, to bring this to a resolution that you're glorified, that everybody saw the hand of God involved in this. The whole world's watching, but Lord God, they're going to see your hand. Hallelujah. And you're going to be glorified as you have in times past where they say, uh, in times past, in past wars, they finally gave up saying, uh, God, their God answers them. Our God is not answering us, so they gave up. Even though they outnumbered Israel, even though they had greater armament, even though they had greater resources, they just could not win. And they finally said, there's something about their God answers their prayers and our God doesn't. Lord, let that ring forth true once again, Lord God. That the whole world would see you high and lifted up. The whole world would see your glory. The whole world would experience your power, Lord God. And we pray for everyone in America, Lord God, that are in our military that might be involved in this in one way or another. We come against the spirit of fear. We come against the spirit of dread, Lord God. We're not giving a demon any platform. We're going to stand strong. We're going to declare protection over our men and women. We're going to protect, but pray, Lord God, to see your favor, Lord. As you said, if we bless Israel, we'd be blessed. Lord God, we're claiming that blessing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord God, for those that are in the crossfire, Lord God, no matter what genealogy or bloodline they have, Lord God, you've opened the, the Holy of Holies up. The veil was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And we all, Gentiles included, can be a part of the family of God. So we pray for salvation, Lord God, that there would be millions that would call upon the name of Jesus, Lord God, that what the enemy meant for evil would turn out to be one of the greatest revivals in the Middle East that has taken place in the history of the world, Lord God, as they would call upon your name, we pray. Salvations, Lord God, deliverances, Lord God. And Lord, we do pray for the peace of Jerusalem as you instructed, and we pray that you'd be glorified through it all in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I am so glad that no matter what goes on in this world, we have a God whom we can come to. Amen. Yeah, a God that can do great and mighty things. I encourage you to come out Wednesday night. If you can't be here physically, to tune in for sure. As uh, I never, I, I never give my sermons out. Uh, for all these years, uh, we've always, the, Pastor Rodica's asked me, what are you going to preach on? I always say Jesus. For 27 years of marriage, what are you going to preach on? Jesus. The kids say, Dad, what are you preaching on? Jesus. Uh, funny story, this week, uh, Caleb's got a sermon coming up, and Pastor Rodrigo, I think it was yesterday, was asking him, Caleb, what are you going to preach on? And uh, he's in the back seat, and we're riding along, and he says, Jesus. <laughs> she said, you're just like your daddy. No, tell me. I want to see if you, know, if you need any help. He said, Mom, I'm preaching on Jesus. <laughs> well, I'm doing something. I'm breaking my code here. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to be ministering on on Wednesday night. Divine Encounters. I'm going to show you God's narrative in Gaza's history. And there's so much there that is amazing. And I encourage you to be here as uh, I, I follow the guidance on the Lord on that on this Wednesday night at uh, 7 o'clock. And uh, after praise and worship, we'll be ministering that. But this morning, I had to be true to what God was giving me. I was trying to push uh, my Divine Encounters, uh, Gaza's history this morning. And the Lord said, nope. 
that's not what the sheep need this morning. And, I, and he gave me what the sheep needs this morning. He said he would lead us by still waters. He would lead us to green pastures. He's got good food and good water for you. He wants you to be strengthened for this week. He wants you to be blessed for this week. I want you to take a moment right now and just go ahead and claim your blessing. The Bible says that God blesses that which gives him honor for the first fruit. He's a first fruit God. Let me explain that. He said, like with Cain and Abel, if you'll remember the story with Cain and Abel, this is just a little side, and I'm chasing a rabbit here, but it's a good one. Okay, good little bunny rabbit. Okay, uh, the Bible says that Cain or Abel gave his first fruit unto the Lord, and Cain, in the process of time, brought an offering to God. They bro both brought an offering to God, but God blessed one, and, and he was very displeased, very displeased with the other. Because God didn't need the gift. So it's the heart behind the gift. So here, Abel is giving the first fruit, showing God, you are my source. Without you, I wouldn't have an increase. You are supreme. But Cain was like, I'm, I'm handling things on my own, and I'll just throw you something down the road when I get time. And God was very displeased with that. So, and that's why Cain killed Abel, because of that. Because God is a God of the first fruit. He doesn't want, just want your offering. He wants the first fruit of your time. He wants the first tenth, okay? And it's not that he needs it. He just wants you to show him that your heart is dependent on him. He is your source. Your employer is not your source. Your retirement, your, your social security is not your source. You know, God is your source. And he wants that to be a part of your worship. So on the first day of the week is why Christians started meeting on Sundays because Jesus rose from the grave on a Sunday and he was the first fruit from the grave. He's a first fruit offering. It was the feast of first fruit. So Christians are like, well, now we're in Christ. There are therefore no Sabbaths and holy days and all of these moons and, and so forth that we have to uh, be held to by law. Gee, all of that pointed to Jesus. We have now, G we've got Jesus. We got everything in Jesus. If we don't have to wait 50 years for a jubilee. We can have a perpetual jubilee in Christ. We can be free in Christ every day. We can be blessed in Christ every day. He's a first fruit God. So they began to worship him on the first day of the week. You have chosen to come and worship God on the first day of the week. So by default, whether you like it or not, you are in position to receive the favor and the blessing of God for this week. Now you may not like that. I don't know what would be wrong with you if that be the case. But I'm telling you by default that is yours. But you have to have faith to appropriate it, take hold of it. So have any of you are going to go at it right now and take your blessing, the first fruit blessing of the Lord on your week. He's going to bless the rest of your week. And for you who brought the first fruit of the tithe unto the Lord, go ahead and receive the blessing on your pocketbook, the blessing on your investments, the blessing on your promotions this week as you're going forth because he's a first fruit God. Amen. Now. The green pastures and the still waters, God said, this is the meat I want to give you to give my people today. So we're going to talk about mountain moving, de devil chasing faith. That's what we're going to talk about because there's somebody in here that's got a mountain that you're dealing with. And there's somebody in here got some devils that is trying to steal your joy and mess up your life. But we're going to put an end to that. We're going to move some mountains and we're going to de chase some devils off today with a faith that God's going to teach us about. So we look in Matthew 17 and 20 and the Bible says, Jesus said to them, if you have faith of a, as a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. I have a picture up before you where the focus is clarity on the grain of mustard seed or the seed of mustard seed that is there. And the fuzzy part in the background is the mountain because what is imported is not the mountain. It is the faith the size of a mustard seed. You don't have to have much. All you got to do is have some <clears throat> that can grow into the largest of the plants there. And Jesus gives us that instruction. So we see in Ephesians, he tells us this, for by grace you have been saved through what? Faith. Through faith. 
Now, that word saved comes from the Greek word sozo. So this word sozo does mean you are saved and on your way to heaven. Your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But that word sozo also means that if you've got sickness in your body, the power of God will drive the sickness out and you can be healed. And, the, and this same word means that if you've got bondage in your life, that the power of God will drive out the demons and set you free. And this word also means that if you're broke, busted, and disgusted, that the power of God will drive out the spirit of poverty and bring in resources in abundance and overflow for generations to come by sozo. Sozo means to be healed, to be made whole in every area of your life. It's the same word, sozo, that when the blind Bartimaeus said, Jesus, have mercy on me, son of David. And he said, Jesus said unto him, your faith has, your what? Your faith, your what? <clears throat> your faith has made you whole. That word whole is sozo. Look it up in the Greek text and you'll find it to be true. The same is true when they, four friends let down their paralytic friend through the roof of that house. And when Jesus saw their what? He saw their faith. When he saw their faith, he said, rise up, take up your bed. You have been made whole. That word there is sozo. It means to be healed, delivered, and made whole in every area. So it is by grace you have been saved, sozo, healed, delivered, prospered, on your way to heaven. You've been saved through what? Faith. And that not of yourselves, it is what? It's a gift of God. It's a gift of God. You're like, man, I missed it when I was born. I was born on the wrong side of the track. I didn't get any faith. No, I, I, it didn't come through generational uh, 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 heritage. It comes from God, and it's a gift. Well, I haven't worked in the church long enough to get my measure of faith. No, it's a gift from God. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So God has given us a gift of faith. You have a gift of faith. And all we need to do is make sure we don't grow weary in doing well. For in due season, we will reap, we will reap, we will win, we will overcome, we will have freedom, we will break through, we will be the head and not the tail if we do not want lose heart. So I'm here to encourage somebody today. I'm here to cur encourage somebody's faith. I, I'm, I'm passing your brain. I don't need to talk to your brain right now. I'm passing, your, I, I'm passing your imaginations. I'm passing all of that. And I'm speaking down into your spirit man right now. I'm speaking down and I'm calling on your faith. I'm talking to that gift of faith that God has given you. It is a mountain moving devil chasing faith. Uh, I'm telling you mountains like fear, bad reports, finances, wars and rumors of wars uh, sickness and disease and demonic strongholds uh, mountains like that are go they gotta go they gotta go see I love talking about faith and I love teaching about faith and I love preaching about faith and the reason why is because Hebrews 11 and 6 which says that faith can move mountains uh, and faith can do that but he also says it is impossible to please God without it the only way I can please God, the only way I can live with the pleasure of God, the only way I can live with the victory of God, the only way that I can make what Jesus did for me on the cross, on the whipping post, with a crown of thorns on his head, with a spear in his side, beaten and, and whipped on that whipping post, all of that, I can make it work for me only by faith. Only by faith. Hallelujah. I love talking about faith. I love preaching about faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the cool thing is, God has given every one of us the necessary ingredient to know him, and that is faith. Look at Romans 12 and 3. For I say through the grace that has been given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to, but to think soberly. Sober up, wake up, wake up. For God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. If Jesus said all you need is the faith the size of a mustard seed, I guarantee you he has given every one of us at least the measure of a mustard seed of faith. You have enough faith to move mountains. You have enough faith to chase off devils. You have enough faith to live in victory. And it's a gift. It's been given to you by God. So the million dollar question is, and I'm not giving anybody a million dollars if you answer it, but the million dollar question is, how are you treating your faith? 
How are you treating your faith? Are you ignoring your faith? Are you trying to intellectualize your faith? Are you trying to uh, uh, take your circumstances and measure your faith by your circumstances? How are you treating your faith? Let me tell you something that is very important to know. That that faith, this, this gift of God that moves mountains, this gift of God that can cause you to chase off devils, this gift, it requires a certain atmosphere to breathe in. Just like a fish needs water to live. And a bird needs the air to fly in. Your faith has to have an atmosphere that it can breathe in. Faith has to be encouraged. If you say, well, if God wants it, it'll happen. No, God gave you the measure of faith. God has given you the seed of faith. When they went and found the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, there was Old Testament text that uh, had been uh, uh, stored in these uh, canisters in this Dead Sea uh, caves, in this dry, arid area. And this uh, shepherd boy uh, finds them and turns them in and they discover what they are. They also found their thousands of years preserved seeds. And the scientists wanted to know, I wonder if these seeds, if they were put in the right atmosphere, if they would germinate and grow us some wheat or grow us barley or whatever the seed was, uh, that's been encapsulated and held up in this place for thousands of years. So they took a few of them and they put them in the right atmosphere and sure enough, they came alive. Sure enough, the power that was in them burst out and they began to grow and produce. Let me tell you what, those seed needed the right atmosphere. I'm telling you, there's some seed of faith in every one, every one of us have it, but some of you've had it in a desert arid place. Some of you have had it in the back shelf of your pantry. Some of you forgot about it when you got into religion and you've moved out of Christianity and a relationship with God. You went through the form and the motion and forgot you got this living power source on the inside of you that needs the right atmosphere to breathe. I'm so glad that I'm a part of Christian Embassy. I'm so glad that this is a place where we purposefully don't preach about the stock market. We purposefully don't preach about the newspaper. We're purposely not coming with 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, or 11 o'clock news uh, because all those things are fighting for your faith. They are trying to get your attention. They're trying to pull you down. Uh, but I'm telling you what, I believe that we are as a people of faith gathered together uh, in this house. Uh, I know that my faith feeds on the Word of God. That's why I'm going to preach the Word of God. That's why I'm going to stand on the Word of God. Uh, so the Word of God is what you're going to get because it's what the Word of God is what you need. Hallelujah. I know my faith breathes in the atmosphere of praise, uh, so there's going to be an open heaven of worship in this house. As long as I'm the pastor here, these heavens are going to be opened. Uh, Holy Ghost can move uh, and minister. And when we sing... We're not singing for somebody's popularity. We're not singing to try and win a record label. We're not singing to please anybody's ear. We're singing unto the Lord. You say, well, I don't like th that song. Well, it wasn't sung for you. Well, I don't like that tempo. That tempo wasn't for you. What we do in here is we glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, we let the Holy Spirit lift up a praise in this house uh, as we know that our source comes from the Lord. Our help comes from the Lord. This is going to be a house of praise hallelujah and I know that my faith jumps to attention uh, when the Holy Spirit is not grieved uh, when the Holy Spirit is not quenched uh, and we yield to the Holy Spirit so yielding to the Holy Spirit is what we're going to do in this house uh, we say Holy Spirit welcome Holy Spirit have your way Holy Spirit move and minister we're not cessationalists we're not saying you ended uh, how in the world could we say you ended uh, you were there at creation when God said let there be light you were the power source of God here on earth that gave light and if we need God today we need you Holy Spirit for you are God dwelling in us hallelujah I know my faith is energized by the synergy of my fellow faithers is what I call you my believing brothers and my believing sisters okay so genuine fellowship and relationships are encouraged in this house we need each other we depend on each other I need to encourage you you need to encourage me I 
I need to bless you, you need to bless me. I need to speak the word of God over you, you need to speak the word of God over me. This is an atmosphere where the, the faith can breathe. Hallelujah. See, I need my faith. I, I don't know if your neighbor heard me, but I need my faith. I need my faith. I said I need my faith. I'm, I'm, I'm focused on faith. Because faith releases the power of the supernatural. And in this world, I need God's help. I need the divine on my side. Hallelujah. And I found out that if you can find someone with faith, they go to Christian embassy and their faith is alive and their faith is moving and growing. You can put them up against their, their back up against the wall. You can get in their face with the greatest threat that you want to come in, devil. But you say, wait a minute, there's no way. It may look like there's no way to man. There may look like there's no hope to, uh, in the natural. Uh, there may look like there's no alter, uh, alternative. But let me tell you what. Your faith rises up and taps into the power of God uh, and says, my God's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. I'm not backing down. I'm not giving up. Devil, you going to back down. Devil, you going to go. Because I got faith that chases devils and moves mountains. Hallelujah. I've seen people with faith that has been given bad news as you have as well. I've seen people with faith who have been uh, counted out. There's no way. I've seen people with faith that had the statistics stacked against them. It's just impossible. But somewhere on the inside of them, the faith of God begins to rise up and say, you know what? You can't give up. You better not surrender. You better not give up. Let's make a way right now, right here, right now. God, show yourself powerful. I'm here to encourage somebody today because your faith is going to move a mountain. Because of your faith, it's going to make a way. Because of your faith, it's going to bring a change in your life. There's power to believe. Power to stand on God's word. Power is activated when our faith is active. I pray you would locate your faith right now in Jesus' name. Because if you can find it on the inside of you, it's a gift. It's already there. You don't have to pray it from heaven. God has already given. It's past tense. He's given each and every one of us a measure of faith. And Jesus said it doesn't have to be but the size of a mustard seed to move mountains and chase devils. Hallelujah. So you've got you to find it on the inside of you. And I'm praying right now through the preaching of the word of God that it's beginning to jump like jumping beans. It's beginning to pop like popcorn. Uh, you're feeling something on the inside of you saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's something in here. I, I, I got something on the inside of me. Hallelujah. I, I, and, and you won't need to let that have a voice. Let it speak louder than the negative circumstances. Give faith the ultimate voice. Uh, let me tell you why. Then you can realize that faith will tap into the divine power of God that is made available to you, the power of faith. you got to realize faith lives on the inside of you. Man, I have a relationship with my faith. I'm a relationship guy. i got a relationship with the Father. i got a relationship with the Son. i got a relationship with the Holy Spirit. i got a relationship with this gift, this gift of faith. I, I tell you, you know, faith moves, the Bible says. Faith rises. Faith responds. Faith can push. Hallelujah. I, 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 it's like I'm talking about faith like it's a person because the Bible refers to faith as a spirit. It says that since we have the same spirit of faith, there's a, that, you know, it has a life. It has a life. I want to give my faith like a seed. I want to give it life. Hallelujah. So we have this divine faith on the inside of us. And, and, and sometimes your faith will defend you. Sometimes your faith will act even before you know it did. I love that. If you just keep feeding your faith, if you keep stirring your faith, if you keep living in an atmosphere of faith, your faith, make, faith is making a way and you don't even realize it. Hallelujah. And there comes a moment in your life, and all of us has had this happen, maybe you're dealing with it today, where bad news hits you. Anybody ever been there? Maybe you're there now. And that bad news comes in, and it's huge. But your faith rises up and says, uh, 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 not today. Uh, I got no time for that. No, no, I'm not going to put up with that. You better get off me. You better back off. You better back down. And your faith begins to talk. I mean, it's like it's almost like a, a, a strong uh, force that says, no, devil, you ain't pulling that mess on us. No way. It ain't happening. 
See, when oppression tries to grab you, your faith rises up and says, get your creepy demonic hands off of me. Man, you got to have an attitude. You got to have an attitude. Let your faith have an attitude. Something trying to hold you down and your faith fight, 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 fights free and say, you ain't holding me down. I grew up with this creepy person in our family. <clears throat> I won't tell you he was an uncle or a cousin. I won't say, but he, he had some issues. And he would want to, every time he would see you, and some of you have got folks you know like this, he'd want to come up behind you and grab you and squeeze you so hard, it's like he wanted to see your intestines come out of your mouth. It was demonic. It was just not natural. It was... And all of us cousins, we avoided him like the plague. Because if you ever got into his grip, it was like a python. It was like, I can't get out of this thing. And it was trying to hold you. Well, I remember as I'm getting older and I get into uh, martial arts, Christian martial arts, and, and I'm learning karate and working out and building some muscle. And, uh, and, and I'm saying, you know what? Um, I told my, my teacher, I said, teach me how to get out of this hole. And he said, what is that? And I told, told him to, to what to do. And he showed me how to do it. And I said, show me how to do it the most aggressive way that will teach the person who did it, don't touch me again. And he showed me how. And I worked on it. And I worked on it. And the next time we had this big gathering, all the cousins are running from this guy, trying to hide tippy toe and not, you know, just like, and I walked up right, right by him. I'm just walking there. And I just turning my back to him, you know, just like, I, I, want, I want to see what happens. And sure enough, he took the bait and he put me in what he thought was his grip of death. And I spun around and throwed him down so fast he had no idea what hit him. And from that day on, he never put his hand on me ever again. I'm telling you, when the devil tries to bring something to put a hold you and hold you down, your faith has got to learn how to fight its way free. Hallelujah. Your faith will run into the phone booth and put on a red cape and come out and say, you better loose me and let me go in Jesus' name. I wish I had a thousand people that would put their hands together and say, I know what you're talking about, Pastor. I mean, across the, the, the Internet and around the world, we're rejoicing in the fact that we have faith. The power of faith. Hallelujah. Every so often your faith will shake things up. Every so often your faith will break, break, break the band. Says, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. And sometimes it's not even something you thought about. It's not even something you pre-planned. It's just faith. That's how it acts. That's what it does. It said, no, if it's of God, we'll receive it. If it's not of God, it's got to go. But you got to keep stirring up your faith. You got to keep growing your faith. You got to keep speaking to your faith because faith, let me tell you what, faith will take care of the devil. Hallelujah. See, faith makes a way. Faith says, I know you got some bad news, but I got you. Faith talks to me. Faith will talk to you. I know you're feeling bad, but I got you. I, I know your bank account don't look too good today, but I got you. Look what I'm going to do. I know you got a bad report, but I got you. Don't you worry about it. I know your kids are acting crazy. Don't you worry about it. I got them. I got them. Faith, it talks to me. Hallelujah. And, and I'm talk, I believe I'm talking to somebody else here today. Am I in this all by myself? Or is there somebody in here who knows what I'm talking about? Who will hear me loud and clear. Your faith will make a way. You've got to trust your faith. You've got to feed your faith. You've got to give expression to your faith. And when you're up against the wall, faith will make a way. I'm telling you, you may be up against the deadline. Faith will make a way. You may be uh, dealing with an impending loss, but faith will make a way. You may be uh, under serious attack today, but faith will make a way. I said, faith's going to make a way. You better not give up. You better not give in. You better not give out because faith is going to make a way. I'm prophesying to somebody right now. Faith is going to make a way. You're in a situation if God doesn't move, but God is going to move. And faith is going to bring him involved. Right now, faith is going to make a way. I'm here to preach to somebody today. I'm here to preach to somebody today. I've come to preach somebody, but get them free of doubt and unbelief. I'm here to preach somebody full of faith that you'll stand up in the enemy's face and say, devil, you gotta go. Devil, you gotta go. 
Faith's going to make a way. Faith makes a way where there seems to be no way. Faith will bring you through the odds when the odds are against you. Faith will make a way. Faith will make a way for you to get up when you feel like laying down, to keep walking when you feel like sitting, to keep on going when you feel like quitting, to praise God and until you freed up from every stronghold of the enemy in your life. I'm talking about the power of faith. I'm talking about the power of faith. Somebody's got to hear me today. I'm talking about the power of faith. It will make a way. Does anyone listening know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? If you know what I'm talking about online, go ahead and comment, like, thumbs up. Say, I know, I need to hear it from you. Don't just sit there. You just need to, you, you need to clap those Holy Ghost claps on digital claps. Hallelujah. Because somebody's faith is being encouraged right now. Somebody's faith is being stirred into action right now. Somebody's breakthrough is lining up right now. I said that to them, I'll say it to you. I say to you right now, somebody's faith is being encouraged right now. I'm saying somebody's faith is being stirred up right now. I say somebody's breakthrough is lining up right now in Jesus' name. I'm trying to explain the elasticity of faith. The elasticity of faith. Faith moves, faith breathes, faith lives, faith has power, hallelujah. I'm telling you, your faith needs to rise to the occasion. Now, when I say the elasticity of faith, I'm just telling you about the nature of your faith, the characteristics of your faith. You don't always need mountain-moving faith every day. Sometimes you just get, need a getting-through faith for that day, right? A getting-through faith. There's a getting through faith. There's a birthing something faith. There's a mountain moving faith. There's a devil chasing faith. Faith has elasticity. It's not just one package in all. It's like it it has, I'm going to use one analogy that this country boy understands. It's like changing gears, shifting gears. Sometimes you got to shift into another level of faith. Hallelujah. See, you have the cruise control faith. That's just, just living by faith. You know, the Bible says just live by faith. Me sing to him, I'm living by faith and I feel no alarm. You know, that's the cruise control faith. And that's good. We need that. But sometimes some things come at you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And, and you've got an incline or you've got something treacherous before you. And, and you have to shift gears. You have to shift gears, I said. You, you, you don't need a cruising faith. You've got to cut the cruise off right now. And you've got to shift into a mountain-moving faith. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Cruising faith was good as I was coasting down the mountain, but now I'm up on rising the other hot side, and I need some mountain-moving faith. And the good news is that no matter what gets in your way, I said no matter, tell your neighbor, no matter what. No matter what gets in your way, no matter what obstacle jumps in your way, no matter what demon or demonic force pops into your way, let me tell you what, you got a gear for it. Hallelujah. The nerve of the devil to think that cruise control is all I got. The nerve of the devil to think my vehicle of faith only has a cruising control gear he is a fool i'm here to tell you i'm telling you he forgot that i got a hummer faith hallelujah i got a four-wheel drive mode that i can go into i can lock the hubs and i can uh, get all the tires pulling and and mud slinging and and i can i got a going through faith i got a climbing out of faith the devil don't know it but my faith has different gears if you don't get the analogy of the gears, maybe you'll get the analogies of Popeye. <laughs> Anybody like Popeye? Okay. We can learn a lot from Popeye the sailor man. See, sometimes it's okay to have pretty faith. Do you understand what pretty faith is? You know, how are you doing? Highly favored and blessed of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Right. That's pretty faith. Pretty faith. That's your testimony faith. How are things going? I got a raise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. That's pretty faith. You clap pretty. You praise pretty. <clears throat> you shout pretty. Hallelujah. You know, pretty faith. That's kind of like cruising faith, cruise control faith. But... I'm glad, I don't know about you, but I'm glad 
I got some ugly faith. I call it ugly faith because the devil don't like it. Okay. I keep my ugly faith in a can way down on the inside of me. Okay. And the devil and I have an understanding. You don't make me and I won't open it. You stay out of my way. I don't even want to smell your breath. Your body odor, I don't want to smell it. I don't even want to know you were there. You sat on my way, I won't open it. And I say every one of you need to, at one time or another in your life, you need to pull out your can of ugly faith and, and roll it at the devil and say, how do you like me now? Oh, devil, where's your grin now? Where's your smile gone now? You, you thought I was just Mr. Nice Guy. You just thought that's who I was. I was just a little praise and cruise along. Well, let me tell you what. I got the pretty praise, but I got the ugly stuff too. And devil, I'll open this can and I'll put an ugly stain on you. That I'm telling you what. I will demand devil. Uh, you're going to lose my kids. Uh, you're going to lose my health. You're going to lose my finances. You're going to lose my peace. Uh, you're going to lose my city. You're going to lose every stronghold you have. You're going to pack up your bags and you're going to get out of town. Hallelujah. I'm trying to help somebody today because the devil is trying to destroy you. He is trying to keep you in pretty mode and I'm telling you, you need to move out of pretty mode and you need to shift gears. You need to shift out of pretty faith and you need to shift out of cruise control faith and just living by faith and get into that, get into that grind it down and get it into four wheel drive, all wheel terrain shift in that 411 gear and get that grip to moving things moving dirt. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's time to get, get real with God because God said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. The devil don't play fair, so why should we play fair? We're trying to come all religious and pretty. We don't want anybody to see us sweat. We don't want to see anybody see us do a praise that's beyond what's cool and natural. But I'm telling you, if the real devil, which he is, come in at us, with violence, let me tell you what, and we can only stand against him with force. Uh, it's time to take my three-piece suit off and put on my stretchy camo and say, I can take you, I can kick you, I ain't got no limitation. You want ugly, I'll give you ugly because I ain't giving up my kingdom. I'm not giving up the kingdom of God in me. I'm not giving up my family. I'm not giving up my town. I'm not giving up my finances. I'm not giving up my health. Uh, and you shift, you shift. And you do, and you move into what God has for you. 31 years ago, going on 32 years, 31 years, this back here was all muck. It was some trees and saplings and big trees. And it was just, it looked, it had some grass on parts of it that wasn't so overshaded. And it looked like it was to hold something up. And we had some something we were doing as a project with the first people at the church. And we needed to haul something back here. And I think it was some trees. And we, needed, and we were going to do a burn pile. And the first vehicle, one of the volunteers says, I'll take it. Put it on my truck. He came back here and he bogged down. It wasn't raining, so we thought it would hold everything up. We knew when it rained it was much mucky, mucky, but it was mucky. It was like quicksand. So the other guy said, ah, oh, my truck's better. He said, I got, a, I got a real truck. You know, that Ford Chevy debate. And I think the Chevy was bogged down. So the Ford guy said, ah, my Ford again. So he come back here and he got stuck. <laughs> and then there was a, a young lady that was in college here driving her dad's truck because her car was in the shop. And he, they lived in the mountains of Virginia. And uh, she said, well, here, you can take my dad's truck and maybe go pull them out. And I said, no, we don't need a third one stuck. She said, well, no, it's a four-wheel drive. So I got in that truck, and I drove back here, and I started spinning, and I got stopped, stuck. I didn't even get as quite as far as them. But then I looked down. I'd never been in that vehicle, and I found out, uh, it's, it put it in neutral. So I put it in neutral, and then there was this uh, four-wheel drive gear, and it said L1 to dig and grip and get it going. And I got it into L1. Then I put it in drive. And the whole thing, I just felt it. Go. And I drove up out of that muck. I went and took the load of stuff there uh, that we needed. And I pulled both of those vehicles out with that four-wheel drive. 
Now, if I'd have never tapped into what it already was created to do, I would have never been able to get out of the mess I was in. Some of you, if you never tap into the faith and what it can do in you, you're never going to get out of the mud or the stuck or over the mountain uh, that you're, that's coming against you. I'm trying to teach you how to shift gears. I'm trying to teach you how to tap into it because the devil don't play fair. The devil, you think the devil is going to give you back what you, he took from you with an apology? What do you think he is, Walmart? Come on now. Or Harris Teeter? We get a bag of apples and we get home and a couple of them are rotten. We didn't see and Pastor Radika takes them back and she comes back with the apples and money. And I'm like, what is that? She said, they apologize. They're so sorry. And their policy is not only will we give you better of what you just got, but we'll also give you your money back. I said, now that's the way to shop. That's the way to shop. But the devil don't work that way. You say, I want a refund. He says, you fool. You fool. (laughs) See, every so often, you just got to get something on the inside of you that says, I've had all I'm going to take. I mean, I've had all I'm going to take, uh, and I'm going to make a stand against the enemy. He's going to not take another thing from me. And not only am I going to get it back, I'm going to take it back. I'm not going and asking for a refund. I'm going to take it back. I'm going to march right into the enemy's camp, and I'm going to take back what the devil has stolen from me. See, we got to get a generation of people to quit accepting the first thing they hear as the ultimate word on the issue. Whose report will you believe? Well, a doctor's a scientist, and he gives you or she gives you what the scientifically the, the, the scans and all the tests tell you. That's one report. They're not the evil person. They're just giving you the natural report. But whose report are you going to believe? There's another report. That's the report of the Lord that says I'm healed, that says I'm strong, that says I'm free. Whose report? report are you going to believe? You're going to believe the counselor that says in my history of dealing with people, we're going to have to manage these demons uh, and we're going to have to negotiate with these demons of fear and anxiety and all these things for the rest of your life. Or are you going to believe the report of the Lord that even the sun sets free is free indeed? Whose report are you going to believe? We need a generation of people that will quit accepting the thing, the first word they get as the ultimate word and say, I serve a miracle working God and I'm going to see by the hand of God a miracle in my life. Hallelujah. So we need the report that God gives us. That's why I'm here. I'm always here taking you to the report of the Lord. See, when, when, when God speaks, my faith jumps. It does. When God's word comes, my faith jumps. Hallelujah. That thing in me, it's like, you're like, I put popcorn in the microwave. Uh, and, and it's just spinning around. It's like nothing's going to happen. And then all of a sudden, pow, 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 pow. I uh, put it on the stove. Pow, pow, pow. I put it in our popcorn maker. And next thing you know, pow, pow. It's coming up out, out of that little thing that's spinning at the top. Next thing you know, it fills up the whole glass container because heat made it come alive. Well, I'm telling you what, God's word makes my faith come alive. And it begins to pop, hallelujah, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If your faith isn't jumping in you like a, like a baby you're carrying in your womb right now, then let me tell you what, we need to get you saved. We need to get your ears unstopped by the blood of Jesus so you can hear the word and the word can set you free. Hallelujah. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you can get one word from God on it, come on now. If you can just hear that one word from God, faith will come. Faith will come. One word, everything will change. One word, everything has to shift. One word and demons have to flee. One word and healing is manifest. One word, deliverance will come. One word, salvation will come. One word, breakthrough will come. I wish there was somebody tuned in today with some ugly faith where you're not trying to sit back and look all fancy and all. But somebody in here say, you know what? I got a mountain in front of me. My family's dealing with some demons. My family's dealing with some setback. There's some attack. There's, there's some spiritual attack coming on me, just like physical attack is going on Israel right now. And I can't just sit back with my pretty faith. I need my violent faith. I need my devil-chasing faith. I need my mountain-moving faith. I, I got to go to the enemy's camp, and I got to take back. I take back. Just like, like this, uh, Hamas uh, took uh, uh, hostages. And let me tell you what. The enemy is always taking hostages. He's taking hostage 
from you. Your health, he's taken hostage from you. Your wealth, he's taken hostage from you. Your children, he's taken hostage from you. Your peace, he's taken hostage from you. Your joy, no, no more, no more. We armed and we locked and we're loaded and we're going into the enemy's camp and we're going to take back what the devil stole from us. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would begin to praise God in this house. I pray somebody would praise God right now, right now, unashamed, ugly faith, ugly faith, a sweating, spitting faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying, I'm trying to get somebody on this side to shift gears. I'm trying to get somebody on this side to shift gears. Hallelujah. Because we have made declarations that we're coming after the lost. We're coming after our cities. We're coming after souls. We're coming after our health. We're coming after signs and wonders and miracles. But you got to believe it. You got to believe it. You got to have some ugly devil chasing faith. It takes ugly devil chasing faith to walk down the street, sweat dripping off your face, face, planting your feet with a strong step. Saying, devil, my feet are here. That means I'm here. And you better move out the way or I'm going to take you down. See, you've been pretty faith. It's like tiptoeing around. Like we were that creepy family member I had. Long distance family member. Not somebody close. But they, okay, but they show up when there's free food. And we'd all, and we'd see him coming and we would act like we got something else to do. No. When I got equipped, I walked up. I turned my back to him. I'm talking all loud. I wanted him to see me. I wanted him to do what he thought he could do. And bam, he was down for the count. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it took some ugly devil chasing faith. Devil chasing faith. You got to have that mountain moving faith where you'll keep praising God until things start changing. Pretty faith says, ah, if I'm easy cruising, everything's fine. I'll praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. But ugly faith says, I'm going to praise God until the breakthrough comes. I'm going to praise God until the pain leaves. I'm going to praise God until the finances come. I'm going to praise God until my child is saved. Even though they're ripping my heart out, I'm going to still praise God for his salvation, her salvation, until they're saved. It's going to keep on praying and keep on praising. Hallelujah. Now, I know, I know. I'm smart enough, this old country boy learned a little over the years, I'm smart enough to know that I may not be preaching to everybody. But I believe there's somebody here I'm talking to. That when you got to a certain level and a certain place, that you said, you know what, I'm not worried about what people think about me anymore. This ain't a people-pleasing time in my life. The devil's too real. He's brought too much pain. Things are on the line. Things are too serious. I don't need to be the little pretty, pretty faith face right now. I need to take down some demons. I need to cast out some devils. I need to move some mountains. Hallelujah. I, I know what I look like preaching right now, but I just don't care. I just don't care. I'm, I'm spraying. I'm dripping. I just don't care because there's a bigger picture at stake. Freedom is at stake. Your deliverance is at stake. Your healing is at stake. Your promotion is at stake. Your advancement is at stake. I know what's at stake. Hallelujah. So I know how to stand here. I do know how to hermeneutically and homiletically articulate a sermon. I do. But, but sometimes that don't cut it. Come on now. Sometimes that just don't cut it. Sometimes I just got to get a hold of my faith. Hallelujah. I got I to gotta fight the devil fire with Holy Ghost fire. Sometimes I just got to stop being pushed around uh, and make a stand uh, and make the devil run for his life. Sometimes I got to change, change gears uh, and get into my mountain moving faith. My devil chasing faith. The opinions of man can't help me. I got to get beyond that. Come on now. I got to pull out a praise that don't stop. You can stop praising him, but I'm going to still praise him. Come on now. I got to have a fight that won't quit. A stance. Get in my right forward stance where I got my balance and my forward motion. You're not going to knock me off of this stance. But I'm just standing here like this and bam, you knock me over. No, I'm in the right gear. No devil. 
Because when you can't help me, when the system can't help me, when the government can't help me, when the, my family can't help me, I know, I know that the power of divine faith will help me. Hallelujah. Tell somebody faith will make a way. Tell somebody faith will make a way. And I came here on assignment today to get somebody out of cruise control faith and to get you into four-wheeling faith, to open your can of ugly faith, if I could say it that way. Come on now. For you to get your faith out and say, I will not be denied. I will not be talked out of it. I'm not going to sit back of the bus. I'm, go- I'm ready to push. Devil, I told you, if you didn't start nothing, then there wouldn't be nothing. But you had the nerve. You didn't have the good sense to leave me alone. So now I'm going down in the basement. Well, the devil said, you live in Hampton Roads. You ain't got no basement. I got a basement. I'm going to the deep place. And when I open the door, I'm going to pull something out and I'm getting ready to release the biggest can of ugly faith that you've ever seen, devil. You better pack it up and run or you're going to be squashed like a bug. Hallelujah. Devil, you just woke up a sleeping giant. Somebody get into that ugly face. Devil, you just woke up a sleeping giant. Devil, you just turned me into your worst enemy. Devil, you better get ready for your worst nightmare. Had you left me alone, I'd have just kept cruising. But you had to push on me. You had to poke me. You had to get in my way, devil. Well, right here and right now, I draw a line in the sand. I'm not going to back up anymore. I'm not going to. You've stepped across the line. You've come in contact with some heavy duty industrial strength Ajax whooping bleach bleach washing faith I'm not backing down hallelujah and I'm ready to run every demon every demon back into hell within its proximity in Jesus name the gate the church shall what not the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church you gotta have ugly faith that's warfare so I didn't come here to negotiate with no devil I didn't come here to have conversation with no devil. Well, how you doing? Well, I'm not doing too good. Jesus told the devil who's trying to talk in his service, shut up and sit down. I'm not here to have a conversation. I know who's in charge. I came here to get back everything that the devil stole from me. That's what I've come. Come on now. You've wasted too many years in fear and insecurity. You have wasted too many years afraid of the devil. You know it's true. You've cried too many tears over that stuff that he's done to you. You've spent too many hours and days and months and and years feeling like the victim. Feeling like you're all by yourself. Sitting in your house crying over your own spilt milk. But I've got something to say to you today. That was then, but this is now. That was then, but this is now. The devil should have taken you out before you learned how to eat the word of God and cause your faith to grow. The devil should have taken you out when you were weak and defeated. The devil should have taken you out. But he don't know who he's messing with today because now you are what? A new creature in Christ Jesus. You're no longer the caterpillar crawling around on your your belly and hoping somebody don't step on you. You've been metamorphosized. You've been transformed. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And you're going to fly you're going to go to another level because of God. I am crucified with Christ. The life I now live is in the flesh. I live what? By the faith. By faith in the Son of God. That's where we got to live. That's where we got to fight from. I read just the other day that he is holding me in his hand and he won't let go. God is holding me in his hand. I've seen that hand. It saved my life. He's holding me in that hand. And he won't let go. So devil, if you're going to get me, you got to swim through the blood of Jesus. Demons, if you're going to get me, you got to defeat the name that is above every name. That even you will bow. Whether you're in hell one day, you're going to bow to his name being high and lifted up. If you get me, devil you got to crawl up in the hand of God. And, and you've got to pry me out of his hand. I dare you to even try. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm going to hold you in the palm of my hand. Can I preach like I feel it? 
I see the time. But can I preach like I feel it? Let me tell you, church. Let me tell you, church. This 58-year-old man right here, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I talk about when I talk about this kind of faith. This is the kind of faith that has preserved my life. This is the kind of faith that has promoted me and given me victory. This is the kind of faith that has made a way where there seems to be no way. It wasn't because I was that strong, but it's because God gave me a spirit of faith and I learned how to use it. It's not because I'm that smart because I've done some dumb things, but it's because God has given me a spirit of faith and I've learned how to use it. I'm telling you, the spirit of faith will rise up on the inside of us. It will rise up on the inside of you and it will tell the devil, not now, not here, not that one. No, it ain't happening. I'm telling you, if you want me to shift years, I'm going to shift years. You better back down, devil. When your faith shifts, everything around you shifts. It's a law. You know the law of physics. In the laws that God has created, there are fields. Let's say there's a gravity. The law of physics has fields. The gravitational field, electrical field, magnetic field, force field. And the law of physics says... To dominate a thing in a field, whenever it changes, everything in that field has to change. You change the magnetic field, it changes everything. You change the force field, it changes everything. It's not just isolated. And the Bible says that the kingdom of God is like a man who hid treasure in a field. So now get this. With this truth, you don't even have to let everybody know about what's going on. It it, it just does this. When you activate your faith, deep down on the inside of you, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, without saying a thing, without announcing to everybody, hey, hey, I'm going to take a stand against the devil. I'm going to get my freedom back, get my healing. No, you don't have to tell anybody. The moment you make the adjustment, you shift the gear, everything has to adjust. Like when I was in that truck and I put it in for, it just, it stood. I'm like, whoa, what is this? It just, it's like a, it's like a, 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 a beast standing up and says, there's more to me than you thought. And now it's here. It's activated. That's why the woman with the issue of blood, you remember the story, 12 years, 12 years, suffering for 12 years, in pain for 12 years, weak for 12 years, ostracized and criticized for 12 years, blood pressure low for 12 years, anemic for 12 years, spent all of her money, broke, busted and disgusted for 12 years, vulnerable for 12 years. You tell me, you tell me, how does a woman who is weak, broke, anemic with low blood pressure and sickly not only get through a crowd but Jesus and the crowd are moving away from her how has it happened how does she get to him I'll tell you how because she heard the word the word faith comes by hearing she heard the word this Jesus is the Messiah and when the Messiah comes there will be healing in the hem of his garment in his wings that was the tassels of the garment she knew the word this is the Messiah. There's healing in the hem of a garment. Him, him, him as a garment. I know what the Word says. I believe what the Word says. And, and, and let me tell you what. The Bible says she said within herself. <laughs> that seed of faith that God gave her came alive. Came alive. Twelve years dormant. Like the seed in the dead sea scrolls in those caves. It was in the wrong atmosphere. But now she heard the Word. Like you're hearing the word right now. Your seed of faith is coming alive. (laughs) There needs to be a shifting of the gear. And she said to herself, she didn't say it out loud. She didn't call anybody, look, 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 what I'm going to do. She didn't find 10 people, get a friend group, let's all come together in agreement. Y'all stand in agreement with me, nothing wrong with agreement. But she said within herself, if I can get to Jesus and touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made whole. And the moment she said this within herself, by faith, faith shifted. Faith, everything connected to her. The fields all started falling into place. Because faith taps into the divine power of God. And faith makes a way where there seems to be no way. Can anybody see that now? It shifted. Now she's squeezing in. She's pressing in. 
The power of faith is given what she needs to get to Jesus. She sees him turn that way and she presses in on that side because the power of faith is giving her what she didn't have. She, she gets cut off by this, this crowd. There's no time for pouting. There's no time for crying. There's no time for calling, you know, crowd hurt. She, because the power of faith gives her what she needs. She has a mountain of people before her, between her and Jesus, but she changed gears. I mean, she's changing gears. She gets into four-wheel drive and she gets to that mountain moving faith because she had a faith, a mountain in her way and faith made a way. And she touched the hem of his garment. Power! Power. Jesus, who touched me? They're like, everybody's touching you, Jesus. No, somebody touched faith, pulled on divinity. Somebody in here today, you're, you're, you're going to shift gears and your faith is going to pull on the divine. And what was natural is going to be overcome by supernatural and you're going to see a miracle of God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Oh, how I want to preach somebody up out of their pit today. Oh, how I want to preach somebody up out of their pain today. Oh, how I want to preach somebody up out of their loss today. Oh, how I want to preach somebody up out of their sickness today. Out of their fear today. Oh, arise and shine. For the glory has come. I know our time is slipping away, but I got to give you one of my personal stories. I can't help it. Because it, it preaches to me, and if it'll preach to me, it might preach to you. I grew up in South Carolina on the East Coast, and we hunted. We ate most of our protein from the woods. We hunted, even though we had a farm. I hunted more than I went to school. I hunted more than I slept. I hunted more than I worked in the fields. I hunted. I didn't want to hunt, but it was just part of what we did in our family. And every kind of hunting. But we hunted down in these thousands and thousands of acres in the swamps of Santee. It was a place where red clay, anybody ever had to deal with red clay? Red clay dominated the landscape. I mean, that could be hard as a concrete paved pad and it could sprinkle or a bird could fly over and sweat and a drop of sweat could hit it and you're slipping and sliding. It would go from hard to slimy, slicky, slick clay. It was terrible. And I remember I had my dad's truck. He had a blazer similar to this one here. It tires a little larger than this. And I was down on the backside of Santee Swamp on the Santee River Road. And I cut through right by the river on what we call Dead Horse Road. Now, it was named Dead Horse Road. You get one guess because there was a dead horse there that rotted for, it seemed like a year. It was horrible. We don't know where the horse came from. We don't know if he died on somebody's farm and they found our hunting club and got through the gate and got back. We don't know where he came from. If he swam the river, we don't know. But there was a dead horse. And none of us would deal with it. we just drive by and hold our nose on this old dirt road. But we named it, it was River Road, but then we changed it to Dead Horse Road. So I'm there on Dead Horse Road. It has rained and I go as far as I could go. And, uh, and I'm stuck. And my back tires are just spinning. I can't go anywhere. And the more I spin, it just, you, your truck, a whole truck slide like on ice. So I'm sliding into the big canal. And I'm like, I got I to gotta stop. I, I'm going to fall in this canal. And you could actually get out and push the truck. It, that's how slimy this clay was. And uh, so there was no traction, no movement. And I was, and I was like 20 miles from any help. And, uh, but my dad had taught me how to shift gears and activate the four-wheel drive. Now, these old trucks, see that right there? That's the hub. And you're, as long as it was turned in one direction, it disengaged this transfer case. So your transmission is only spinning your tires back here. So I had to get out in this mud. Everything's automatic today. But back then, I got out, sliding, sticking all to my boots. And I went to this tire, and I switched that, turned, flipped the hub, turned the hub. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, okay, a couple of you guys, yeah. yeah. Richard, I know Richard. And then I went over to this one here, and I turned those hubs. And then I get back in and put it neutral. 
And down on the floor uh, board there was my little gear stick for my four-wheel drive, L2, or for high. I had an L high and an L1. That's the, I get that 411 gear kicked in and everything uh, grinding. I mean, torque like you've never known. And, 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 I, and, and we didn't use it that much, so, and I was using it. Uh, somehow it would, it, would like, it would grind a little. And I'm pulling it down and going... <laughs> truck stood up. It just stood up. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I put that thing in gear and it goes... Mm-hmm. I got the brake and I let off... Just let off the brake. And those two cherry bomber dual exhaust going out about... Run, run, run. You know, he had it loud. And uh, that thing just started idling out. And it idled back on the middle of the road. And I didn't want to spin it and get sliding again. But I just kind of gave it a little gas. And I got out of that place. Un- otherwise, I'd still be there right now. I'd still be right there. I'm here to preach to somebody today into a gear shift. you got to shift gears. You got, faith is ready to make a way, but you got to sh- shift gears. So I've come to tell the devil, devil. And somebody needs to join with me and say, devil... Don't, don't you count me out too early now. Because our favorite scripture at Christian Embassy, one of them is Micah 7 and 8. Don't you rejoice over me, my enemy, when I fall. I will arise. I will arise. See, we got we to gotta shift gears. We may be down for a moment, but we're not giving up. We're not going to give in. We're not, and we've seen this in the natural with Israel over and over. And I'll talk about it Wednesday night. Over and over when the enemy says, I got you now. And it looks like they're down. And they're outnumbered 101. And it looks like there's no way. But <laughs> the shift takes place. Uh, and then thing you know, a mighty hand of God is moving. And miracles are being recorded uh, because there's no other way. There's no other way. They could have come out victorious. Well, you're going to come out victorious. You're going to come out victorious. Somebody who's listening to me right now, who's been, you've been beat up, you've been tore up, you've been messed up, you're feeling like the devil has had the upper hand. But I came to tell you these two, four words. Get ready. Get ready. I'll say it again. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready to open up your can of ugly faith because faith will make a way. Go ahead and shift gears and say, devil, I may have cruised in here this morning, but I'm going out here and lay out a low, low drive. Hallelujah. I'm going out here in four wheel drive. I'm going to press in. I'm going to press on. You got to say within yourself, if I could but touch the hem of his garment. Hallelujah. The Bible says some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I'm telling you, we have greater power than all the chariots, all the weaponry, all of the missiles, all of the planes, all of the drones, all of the armament there is known to man. We have greater in our God. And all the horses, it doesn't matter what resource, it doesn't matter what intelligence they have. When the enemy comes against you, we're not putting our trust in chariots. We're not putting our trust in horses, but we're putting our trust in Almighty God uh, who has given us His name, uh, power of attorney, that in the name of Jesus, demons have got to go. In the name of Jesus, mountains got to move. In the name of Jesus, sickness has got to go. In the name of Jesus, healing has to come. In the name of Jesus, deliverance has to take place. In the name of Jesus, joy unspeakable and full of glory is coming back into my life. Uh, In the name of Jesus, a peace that surpasses all understanding, uh, even in the midst of war, I'm going to have a peace I don't have understanding for, but it comes from God. I'm not trusting in what I see. I'm not trusting in what I hear about man. I'm trusting in what thus saith the Lord. And the Word of God says you're going to be blessed coming in and going out. You're going to be blessed in the city and in the field. You're going to be the head and not the tail. You're going to be an overcomer. No more than an overcomer. A conqueror. No more than a conqueror. Through Christ Jesus our Lord, it's time for us to rise up and say it's time for mountain moving devil chasing faith to be enacted I'm going out of here stronger than I came in I'm going out of here tapping into my can of ugly I'm opening it up now and saying devil get out of my way I'm taking you down I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord would you stand with me please hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just hear the Lord saying, somebody's spirit man is talking right now. 
You speak into that, you speak into that faith, that seed of faith in the, in the basement. And you're telling it, get ready, get ready, get ready. Things are about to shift. Things are going to change right now. For whoever's doing that, I want you to just come to this altar. So I just got to make a movement. I got to make a stance. Just come to this altar. altar. You're coming up here right now to say, it's shifting. It's shifting. I'm not going by what I see. I'm walking by faith. Go ahead and walk it out right now. Let your, your scripture be, I'm walking by faith by walking up to this altar. We're going to have a closing prayer around this altar right now. I'm walking by faith. I'm walking by faith. An ugly, ugly faith. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, I'm changing gears right now. I'm getting into a mud slinging, a, a tire spinning, a mountain moving faith. Hallelujah. We think they're going to get muddy. They may even get a little bloody. But I tell you, the demons are going. The devil's going. The sickness is going. The bondage is going. The fear is going. The bondage, I say, I say bondage. I say bondage. I hear in my spirit, somebody's bound, but the bondage is going. You're going to get set free. You're going to say within yourself like the woman with the issue. You're going to say, I know what the Word says. And the Word says, if the Son sets me free, I'm free indeed. I'm not leaving here bound. I'm not living another day bound. I'm not going to put up with being bound. And I'm not only going to take being free, I'm going into the devil's camp. Uh, and I'm going to take back what he stole from me. I'm going to take it back and he's going to pay me seven times. Uh, seven times what it's worth. Uh, my years are coming back. Uh, my health is coming back. Uh, my wealth is coming back. Uh, my joy is coming back. My kids are coming back. My grandkids are coming back. My parents are coming back. I'm ta- coming back. They're coming back. They're coming back. They're coming back. I'm taking them. I'm taking them. I'm shifting. I'm shifting. Holy Ghost. I'm, t- I'm partnering with you right now. And I'm calling it in right now. Father, you see your sons and daughters standing around. But maybe you're not up around this throne, around this altar right now. Because you don't feel like you have a right. Because you're outside the family of God. Well, honestly, if you're not in the family of God, you don't have that covenant right. But the good news is this. You can be born into the family of God within seconds. You can be born into the family of God right now. Everyone who calls on the name of Jesus. Come on, say it with me, Jesus. Jesus! Come on, let's say it. Let's say it together. Jesus! Everyone who calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. Sozo. Healed. Delivered. Set free on your way to heaven in covenant with God. Born again. Born anew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Call on His name. If you're not up here... Because you don't feel like you're in covenant with God, you can be in covenant with Him right now. Just pray, Jesus, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Cleanse me, Lord. I want to surrender my life to you right now. I believe that God has raised you from the dead. Jesus, you are alive. And I confess right now that you're my Lord. Go ahead and say, Jesus. Say it out loud. Jesus, you are my Lord. Hallelujah. And if he's your Lord, then he's your Savior. You're born again. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's a free gift. A gift received by faith. Entered into by faith and faith alone. You can receive it right now. The gift of salvation. The gift of the new birth in Christ. The gift of coming into the covenant family of God. Receiving that measure of faith now that you can can enact. You can cause it to move by speaking the word over it. Whatever you need. So maybe someone else needs to come now. Just come on up. We walk by faith. We're just coming up. Maybe you've just given your life to Jesus. Or you didn't maybe understand what the call was. But right now I'm going to pray for those that are around this altar. Hallelujah. Do you feel it alive in you? Do you feel faith alive in you? Faith. The faith of God. The faith, the gift. It's it's moving. It's popping. It's ready to burst forth. The supernatural manifest of God in your life. No mountain can stand before you. No demon can bind you. Satan himself, even though he's at the Middle East right now, if he were here, he couldn't, he himself couldn't hold you because the faith in you is greater 
than he who is without if you will activate it. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that each and every person here would locate their faith right now, that seed of faith, that, that measure of faith, that gift of faith. And Lord God, that they would commit to you right now that they're going to keep this faith in an atmosphere where it can breathe, in an atmosphere where it can germinate, it can break out of the shell. It could break out of just cruise control faith. And it can break forth into that mighty moving of mountains faith. Pulling down stronghold faith. Bringing the manifest of healing faith. Lord God, we commit to you right now. That even if it takes ugly faith, we don't care what we look like. We don't care how much we sweat, mess up our hair. It doesn't matter. We kneel or fall before you, Lord God. Our clothes get wrinkled. Who cares? Because there's a real enemy trying to kill, steal, and destroy. But you said that we would be victorious. You said that we would be more than conquerors. You said that we would be overcomers. You said that we would be the head and not the tail. If we'll just use this faith. So, Lord, I pray that every person here would commit themselves to to nurture feed with the word of God feed with the atmosphere of praise and worship feed that faith that Lord God that, that which is of the smallest seed the mustard seed then grows into the largest plant larger than life testimonies I pray right now testimonies larger than life will come out of this shifting of gears right now testimonies that others will be encouraged by where these individuals right here are going to take hold of their healing they're going to take hold of their deliverance they're going to take care of their lost loved ones they're going to pull them in they're going fishing they're fishing they're they're, they're sending out a line they can't even see that line but they're going to snag that lost loved one they're going to bring them in slowly but you're bring them into the kingdom we ain't letting them. We're fishers of men. We're not letting not one, not our family. No, we're not letting our family. And then we're going to take it to our neighbors. And we're going to take it into our community. And take it around the world. Miracles, Lord God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, let healing manifest right now. Somebody's body. You're going to feel the manifest. You're just going to feel it right now. You're going to feel. Some of you are not going to feel anything. But when you turn and walk away, you're going to be like, well, it's not there. Some of you are going to go get in your car and when you get to the place you're going to eat at home or whatever, you're going to get out and say, I feel better than ever. I speak it over you right now. They that wait upon the Lord is going to renew their strength. You're waiting on Him right now. You're trusting in Him right now. He's going to renew your strength. God is not a man that He should lie. He's going to renew your strength. There's a renewal coming right now. I'll go ahead and say, the, I'm speaking the Word of God over you right now. I'll say this over you. You're, you're taking your years back. He says, have you not known and have you not heard that the Lord God Almighty, He's all-powerful, He's all-knowing, He's the awesome God. The young men, they faint, they grow weary, they faint. But He says, they, you wait on the Lord. He's going to renew your youth like that of an eagle. Your years are coming back. Stop being focused on that number. And get focused on your faith in God's Word. God's Word is coming to you right now. Your, your years are coming back. Your youth is coming back. Your youth is coming back. You're gaining some years. You're gaining some years. And your strength is coming back. You're gaining strength. You're gaining strength. You, you will see the mighty work of God. And by faith, I want you to take back what the enemy stole. Will you commit to me to do that? I'm going to take back what the enemy stole from me. I'm going to demand he pays sevenfold. I'm going to demand he pays sevenfold. Harris Teeter will give you twofold just to try to keep your business. The devil's going to give you sevenfold so you'll leave him alone. You thought you were wanting him to leave you alone. No, you turn this thing around. He will want you to leave him alone. He'll be the one tippy-toeing around trying to get around so you don't see him nowhere because he knows you know. He knows you know. He knows you know that you got a faith. You got a mountain moving, devil chasing faith. 
you got a gear that you've used uh, and now you're not going to stay stuck anymore. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How about if you would just take, put your hands, take, touch somebody. You can take them by the hand or just put your hand on their shoulder. There's so much in you. That's what I'm seeing. God said there's so much in you. Just let it flow to that next person. And begin to speak. God, bless them. God, heal them. God, meet their need. Meet their need according to your riches and glory. God, whatever they need, let it flow. Let it flow. You got more than you need. The Lord says it's, he's priming the pump right now. If you'll let it flow through you, more is coming to you. That's what he just showed me. So you got to let some of it flow out of you right now. So you got to let some of it flow out of you right now. So just say, I give it to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, what this is a gift from God, but I'm giving it to you. Lord, bring healing to this person. Bring deliverance. Bring strength. Bring joy. Bring peace. Bring victory. Bring, bring joy unspeakable. Lord, just give it to them. Give it to them. Give it to them. Freedom. Freedom. Let the anointing drive off every foul spirit. Every foul spirit must go. Submit to God. Resist the devil. He has to flee. He has to run. He has to go. So I speak freedom over you. I speak deliverance. I speak joy. I speak healing. I speak prosperity. I speak lost loved ones saved over you. I preach. I just speak it over you. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Hallelujah. Now, Father, I pray as we go into this week, our first fruit week, Lord God, it's this first fruit day. Everything we're going into is going to be blessed. Everything's going to be anointed. Everything's going to be touched. Or will there be any devils? Yes, I know there will. But God, we know how to stand against them right now. We know how to put them to flight right now in the name of Jesus. We're going in victory. We're going to stay in victory. We, we're going with our shifted of our faith in that lower gear, Lord God. We're going out in that kind of faith this week and we're going to clean house we're going to clean up some roadways we're going to take some mountains out we've been looking at those mountains too long they've been hindering us too long they've been boxing us in too long we're going to take some mountains out we're going to move some mountains hallelujah they, go, they are here but we're going to tell them to go there and they're going to go there in the mighty name of Jesus we're going to put the word to work we're going to put the word to work because we know the word works if we work the word. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Now come on, give him praise for the victory that's coming. Praise him for the miracles that's coming. Praise him for the breakthrough that's coming. Praise him, I say. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May God be glorified. May God be glorified.